Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Racer X Exhaust Podcast, brought to you by Yoshimura, proudly backing the new 2019 250 Supercross East Region Champion, Chase Sexton and the Geico Honda team. They've been part of the team for nearly a decade, and I'm going to throw in another plug. Alex Martin and the JGR Yoshimura Suzuki team. Alex said today in the season opening press conference, got a little chip on his shoulder, going to try to prove people wrong about uh, the Suzuki RMZ 250. And probably, to be honest, a little bit himself, because no matter how often he finishes second in the championship, he never seems to ring uh, loudest on everyone's list of championship contenders. So let's get into that. We're going to talk Lucas Oil Pro Motocross today with the riders in the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Today, Thursday afternoon at Hangtown, I hosted the season opening press conference. Now, normally they ride also. But today, the riding was rained out. They're going to ride Friday instead. But their loss is our gain. For sure, this year, we got much longer, better, and in-depth answers from the riders because they weren't all antsy and counting the minutes till they could get out there on the racetrack. Also, Racer X, of course, brings this all to you, Racer X Magazine. We have a new issue that is just launching. We've got a cool story by <clears throat> Steve Mathis about rules in the sport and how they enforce them disqualifications, rough riding, all that. I wrote a story on the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team about how they were getting to at their least race-winning ways. Titles, ahem, ahem, didn't quite work out. Anyway, you can check it out, racerxonline.com slash subscribe to get hooked up with the print and or digital edition or go to digital.racerxonline right now and check out a preview of the latest issue digitally. I'm telling you, this digital edition is like no other digital edition of a magazine you've ever seen. Just scratch the word magazine and just think of it as a really cool looking website with exclusive content. It's totally different stuff than we post online. Also really cool this podcast, pod, podcast, 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 podcast. So on to our riders. We're joined by three riders who have won races in this championship before, a couple of them winning titles, as well as one of, as well as a former 250 champ and one of the top rookies. I'll start here with Ken Roxon, two-time series champion 2014 and 2016. He's riding for the Honda HRC team. Uh, Kenny, when you showed up for Hangtown last year, it was almost like we had a ghost. You were finally back at the races. We hadn't seen you for a while, and I know you didn't have a lot of prep before the 2018 championship, so just compare where you are physically and even mentally this season compared to one year ago. Well, uh, yeah, last year was very difficult as I came off a hand injury and that was kind of haunting me throughout actually the entire season because I, sh I struggled with it big time, but came in with zero, zero preparation really um, and just made the best out of it. Well, this year, I wouldn't say, I, w I would say we're far away from being where I should be, but overall we're here, we're in a lot better spot than we were last year and I'm excited to just get this going and just build every single weekend and see what we can do. It's going to be a mud fest, obviously, on Saturday, which uh, I tend to like. So I'm excited to just get going here and, um, yeah, get back to racing. Uh, I know you've always been an open and honest guy, even with some of the injuries and things you've had through the years, but is it almost getting to the point where you just want to move away from that and, and focus on the positives? Because it seems like too often these season opening press conferences are about how are you feeling? How are the injuries? How's the illness and all that? Are you looking to move past that? Yeah, 100%. You know, I've done, I've done my side of, uh, you know, going to see specialists and whatever, and uh, we know what we know now, and it's, it, you know, I, I really want to move on, and um, that's what I mean by building every single weekend. Uh, we're not 100% uh, prepared as of right now, but we're also not terrible, so we should, uh, we should get better every single weekend and uh, hopefully be in a good spot. Yeah, in Supercross, you mentioned not feeling 100% physically. This is a tough series physically. Are you worried at all to get through 24 motos? Is, that, is it that level of, of worry, or are you confident you can get at least through the races and then see where you stack up? Well, at one point, it, it was like that. You know, mid-Supercross season when I had the, the problems that I had, I, you know, it's almost like I would have lost a lot of money, you know, because I thought, you know, I, I, there was something, like, seriously wrong. Because I know what it feels like just being tired or not, you know, being sick or whatever, and you yeah. bounce back from it. And it was ongoing for a long, for a long time, and ultimately came back to uh, San Diego racing. My body has changed just from all the surgeries and everything, and um, 
having to be on two antibiotic cycles because of the burns that we had, like, wiped me out completely, unfortunately. And it's been a long, or it's taken a long time to even somewhat bounce back. But at least now, you know, I'm working myself back up. And um, obviously, I wish that would have never happened because we were in a way different spot right now. But overall, we, you know, it could be a lot worse, too. So I'm holding on to that and looking to the positive side of things. And, um, you know, we should be getting stronger every single weekend. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we have some press here. If anyone has questions for Ken Robson, just raise your hand. I'll, I'll pass you the mic. Um, okay, I'm going to move to, uh, you got one right here? Ken, you said uh, you know what you know now. Can you share with us what that is? Well, just like what I, what I touched base on right now, the antibiotic cycle that I went on and wipes out your good bacteria, bad bacteria, and all that stuff. And it really messed with me there for a long time and still to this point, but we're a lot better than we were for a while there in Supercross, so. Has it affected you uh, on the bike time? As last year, one of the struggles was not only the hand, but you didn't get to test a lot, and you were developing the yeah. bike as the season went on. Have you been able to do enough outdoor riding, at least on that side, to know where you stand? Um, not as much as I would have liked to, but I think physically I'm not in too bad of a spot compared to uh, where I was last year. So I think you know once you had a once you had a decent base, I think it's uh, it comes back a lot quicker than you think. So. That's what I mean by we're back to uh, back to my program and trying to get better day in day out. You know you can't go too crazy all of a sudden, but yeah. I, I'm very very confident that week in week out we're gonna get stronger every weekend and uh, hopefully get good results. Even this weekend, you know I know that I'm not coming here and being okay with just riding around. So I'm you know I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, you won the championship uh, two times, and when you won in 16, it was really a dominant season. I think you won 20 motos, so you know what you're capable of, and it almost seems like when it's all right, motocross even comes a little easier to you than supercross. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it just ultimately comes back to that I have more motocross experience just based on being in Europe, and we don't really race too much supercross over there, and all we ever did was prep for GPs, and and right moto so i think that just comes a little bit more natural to me so um holding on to that it's good muscle memory and um overall though i do have to say after being on supercross for so long it definitely feels weird going through outdoors and um we all you know not just me but we all don't get that much time to prep for outdoors but it's the same for everybody so um but it's fun to have a change going from supercross to motocross and then back to supercross uh, any other questions for ken roxon two-time series champ all right, thank you, Ken. Uh, I'm going to move to Zach Osborne. He's one of the rookies in the 450 class racing for Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing. Zach, you won the 250 title two years ago. Last year was cut short with injury. Uh, but now you're on to the 450. A lot of times we talk about rookies and what they have to learn, and maybe they need a season to learn. But you've been through so much in your career. Do you feel you can skip some steps and maybe be a contender in your first year as opposed to needing a few years to figure this all out? Well, I think just uh, due to my age and uh, kind of where I'm at in my career, um, I'd, my, my expectations are a little bit different from myself and also from the team uh, compared to a, what a normal rookie is. So, yeah, I think um, I'm coming in pretty confident with what I have as far as setup goes and um, some really good you know, races to end the Supercross season, some positive notes, and uh, just in a place where I feel really comfortable and... Um, coming to Hangtown, a track that I've had good success at the last couple of years, and um, yeah, I think uh, I, I hope to, you know, to answer your question, I hope to avoid some of the pitfalls. Well, you've won four straight motos here in the 250 class, of course. Was that just how ready you were for the beginning of the season, or is there something about the Hangtown track that seems to work for you? Uh, both. I think um, my, my bike setting and the comfort that I carried over from 2017 to last year was definitely a huge factor in, in me winning two motors last year. Um, but also I like the Hangtown track. I like the, the ruts and the, the bumpier the better for me. So um, it kind of plays to my favor um, being that it's one of the first rounds and there's not a ton of, you know, prep time for other guys. You know, being able to carry that, that setting into to last season was really good. But now being on the 450 and kind of starting from scratch, I've kind of found something that I feel good about of the last two weeks um, and, a, and a couple weeks before that as well. So I feel like going into the race, I'm in a really good spot. Yeah, the last two Supercrosses were much better than the ones before that. So there is something from those that can carry over uh, to what you learned there that can apply here? Yeah, of course. Um, as I told you, kind of at the, the end of Supercross, I, 
I stumbled across some stuff as we were testing outdoors um, that translated to Supercross and then, you know, obviously back into outdoors again. So I definitely feel like the, the sort of form that I had at the end of Supercross, I, I can carry over. Before Supercross, before an injury, unfortunately, knocked you out of the first few rounds, we heard great things about your lap times. How do you feel the times you've ridden? I know you ride with Marvin and some other teammates and things like that. How do you feel you do stack up at least? It's not the same as racing, but coming into the opener. I'll say, you know, I've never really been that good um, on like the SoCal tracks, um, the conditions. And this year I've been in a much better position as far as comfort and, and how much comfort I have kind of through all those conditions. And that kind of gives me some, some good confidence said obviously we practice together and and we know a lot about each other's craft but um i think racing is a little bit different so i just want to put myself in a good position stay out of trouble and, um, get out of california and in a really good position i think when we get east coast i'll be able to do that and i think we'll be able to get a little bit more comfortable even again and can make maybe make some uh some runs and some wins the question for zach osborne 250 champ in the past making his 450 debut mike off Thank you. Steve Jefferson, final minutes. Uh, you talked about not really preferring the West Coast tracks. Does having a, a potential rain race like this kind of even things out a little bit? For sure, and, and I think that they always do a, a really good job of making this track more East Coast-ish, if you will. Um, so coming to Hangtown gives me a lot of confidence. I was, I was more speaking about like the Tuesday conditions, you know, at fall or Nelson or Thursday at Glenelg and it's like slick and hard and something that I've never really ridden that much growing up or in my pro career either. So um, coming to these races, I, I feel comfortable because I know the, the way the tracks will be prepped kind of favors me and, and um, it's just something that I have a lot more uh, skills for, I guess you would say, and uh, a lot more confidence. Anything else for Zach Osborne? All right, good luck in your rookie 450 season. Uh, I'll move to uh, Marvin Buscad. A uh, couple times runner-up in this 450 championship. This maybe, I'm sure you're hoping, could be the year where you get it done. The Red Bull KTM rider. Uh, is there anything different with your approach this year as opposed to the last two where you came close? Or do you say to yourself, I was close, just keep doing what I'm doing and, and maybe one year it'll work out? Yeah, exactly. Just uh, keep doing what, I'm, what I've been doing. It's been... Uh, a good few seasons, but like you said, uh, coming close to uh, winning the championship and winning a couple of races here and there. And uh, last year, my goal was just to be more consistent than the year before, and that, that's what I did. But uh, but uh, yeah, obviously Eli, Eli was strong, and uh, I only got like I mean only I got two two wins uh, last year overall, and um, but made up uh, you know more got more points than the year before, so, and that was the goal. So. Uh, yeah, just uh, just another year of trying to, to get better and uh, do what I've been doing. Uh, I got always a good program and uh, a good team behind me with Red Bull KTM and uh, good teammates, uh, training partner as well, and uh, been putting in the work. You know, like those guys mentioned, you know, not much time to get ready for outdoors, but we have a lot of experience with the team and myself going into uh, into that and uh, switching Supercross to to outdoors and. Uh, been feeling, you know, pretty good and, and, and strong on the bike, so definitely looking forward to get it started. And uh, with those conditions, you never know what can happen, but it's only the first round. Yeah, how similar is the bike you're going to race on Saturday from what you ended the year on in Indiana and Ironman last year? Does a lot change year to year, or did you find where you wanted to be, and now you're just going to stay close to that? Uh, it, it's pretty much pretty. I mean, it's close. It's pretty much the same, but. Uh, where we've learned, uh, you know, for the past year, and uh, we also learned from Europe as well. You know, they, they've been doing a lot of work over there too, as well, and trying to uh, to see what they have uh, suspension setups and stuff, and engine, and we've been trying some stuff uh, down in Florida, and then the last few weeks in California. So, but other than that, it's I really like what I know, you know, especially on engines. And uh, but yeah, we tweaked a little bit suspensions and. Uh, like I said, I have good experience as well, so I'm looking forward to get it started. Uh, for you to be a rider from France to move over to the United States and contend for titles and win races as you've done, are you? do you say to yourself, it already kind of is a dream come true. That was a big journey. I've been successful. I'm on a good team. I win races. Or do you look at, until I get one of these big bike titles, I'm not satisfied. Where do you square up with what you want to accomplish in your career? No, yeah, yeah that's exactly what, what you mean. I mean, it's... Uh, it's my ultimate goal to get a, a championship, either outdoor or, or supercross. You know, uh, one or the other will mean so much to me. Um, 
growing up, obviously watching races like that and then dreaming about being in this position where I am right now. But where, when you're in there, you, you want, always want more, you know what I'm saying? But uh, when you look back at it, you, um, I'm really proud of uh, what I've, I've done. But yeah, not, not completely uh, satisfied, that's for sure. And I um, feel like I have a lot more to come and to accomplish. We have questions for uh, Marvin Buscan, runner-up in the championship uh, two years in a row. Uh, the Red Bull KTM team. All right, thanks, Marvin. Hey, I got one. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Marv, can you talk about the um, how uh, working with David Villeman is helping you prepare for outdoors? I know he took you through Supercross, but now this is a, a whole different thing. Can you talk about your working with David? And then I have a follow-up after that. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I um, I decided to have a, a DV, uh, um, you know, for for the, the technique side of uh, of the, the the training. So uh, and the outside look at, at myself and the, the the technique, the lines and, uh, and all that. So I, I follow Alden's program with the the lap count and and the physical side. So DV is only a you know a little extra piece of my the puzzle. And uh, unfortunately, the last few weeks I've been you know focusing on on the testing with the team and getting ready for outdoors and. Uh, but DV will be here at the races, so that's a, that's, that's a plus, and I like to have him, uh, like I just said, uh, looking at the other riders as well, or the lines and, and all that, and we can communicate also with Dylan that rides uh, on the 250, and uh, we can share uh, lines and opinions on tracks and stuff, and that, that's a plus. I've always um, been amazed at the commitment uh, people like yourself or Ken have to come over here and, and pursue championships. And it seems um, since Dylan arrived, you guys uh, obviously share a lot in common, and and DV works with both of you. I see your impressions on um, two weeks ago when Dylan came from behind and won the championship, and what your thoughts were and and feelings as you watched that for him. Yeah, I mean it's awesome. Yeah, I've I've done it on the 250, and he's done it uh, like a couple weeks ago, and uh, I know he's been working super hard, and that that was his dream. So. He's, um, that's his first one, and I think there is more to come. Um, he's putting everything into the, he's dedicated to, to racing, and uh, that's nice to see. So I wish him, uh, you know, the best, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's good. You know, there is not, not many riders uh, moving up from Europe and, and doing what Ken or myself have done, you know, but uh, it's, it's a big step, it's a big life changers and uh but that that's what we love to do is racing their bikes and uh and here is the best country to do it okay that's uh marvin thank you uh, i want to mention our new monster energy supercross champion cooper webb uh was scheduled to be part of the press conference he missed his flight but we will have riding tomorrow i presume he'll probably be here for that so if members of the media want to be able to talk to cooper he'll be around i i presume tomorrow for our one o'clock riding session and now we move to our defending and two-time champion of the 450 motocross class from Monster Energy Kawasaki, Eli Tomac. Uh, you're still the man to beat, running the number one plate again. And some history on the line here. Only three riders have ever won this title three years in a row. Even winning back-to-back -back is actually surprisingly rare. Just talk about how difficult it is to try to stay healthy, stay consistent, and even be in the fight three years in a row. It's... When a rider is at your elite level, you almost assume that's going to happen, but it's nothing to be taken for granted. <laughs> I mean, absolutely not. It's uh, like just the series we come off of, right? The 17 weekends of Supercross and then straight into here with the one weekend off. I mean, that's the challenge. And, uh, you know, being healthy and having that health is, is so important. And uh, I've been fortunate that way the last two years for this series is, is being healthy. And I've always had, a, you know, just a good start of this series, um, you know, starting here with Hangtown. Like, I, I've got a good feel for the West Coast, and it usually kicks me off to a, a good start. So, um, yeah, back at it again. Yeah, you've won three of the last four years here on the 450. Same thing I had for Zach, who won two years in a row on the 250. Do you feel you come in extra prepared, or is it just Hangtown itself that works for you? Yeah, it's, it's like, it, it's hard to get, you know, that extra preparation, but... It's, it's like you either have the feel here or you don't. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I have that good feel here. Uh, last year was actually a very consistent year for you outdoors. You had one moto where you had a bike problem. But really beyond that, except for the final moto of the year, you were just trying to clinch the title. You were pretty solid, uh, mm -hmm. even more so than you were when you won the title in 2017. Uh, are there things you take from that? You start where you started last year or with the new motorcycle and things. Is last year the past and it doesn't really apply? I mean, it's 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 hard to say. I mean, yes, we are on a, on a new platform this year, you know, a new motorcycle. So, uh, you know, you can't take exactly what we have from last year uh, straight into this first round. But uh, 
try to go with what you know and, and take that experience and, uh, you know, just it's like another year with these tracks. You know what to expect and try to make it happen. Uh, the competition appears to have stepped up. Zach's moving into the class. Uh, Marvin's as strong as always. Ken's probably in a better position than he was last year. Cooper Webb is up to his game. Do you think the competition is deeper, or do you just look at what you're doing and not even think about that? It's hard to say. It's like each year there's always something different and something new, and uh, and who's going to be the guy and or who is going to be the guy, you know? So um, you, you just don't know. I mean, yes, but, yeah, our, our field is, is pretty awesome nowadays. Supercross, you actually were technically in the title fight right to the end. So were you in a Supercross state of mind up until two weeks ago, or have you been able to dabble and get your bike and your mind even wrapped around racing this? <laughs> I mean, to be totally honest, it's like, I, you know, you come in here, you pull in, and you're like, holy crap, we're already here, uh, or holy moly, we're here. But, uh, I mean, that's the way it is. Like, it, it comes really, really fast, and but everyone has to deal with it. Like these guys said, like, everyone's on the same, or on the same page, like, you just gotta, you gotta go with what you got. Your ending to the Supercross season was a big step up. You won a lot of races toward the end of the year. Uh, same thing with Zach stepping up toward the end of the year indoors. Are some of the things that help there things that can apply here? It should be. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of the sensations, you know, I was having in Supercross and some of the things we you know, improved on will, will for sure uh, be better for Moto2. Okay. Uh, we have questions for our two time and defending champ. Eli, talk about that transition between Supercross and, and outdoors, how different it is, and, and uh, how much are you changing suspension throughout the weekend here? Well, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing, right, is your suspension. You do some chassis things. Um, but in the 450 class, it's, it's just a time crunch. It's a lot different when you're in the 250s. I feel like, you know, you had the time to, uh, you know, to really get your head around it, getting ready, you know, for moto. But in the 450, it's just like one to the other. So um, that's a different the difference there um but yeah suspension is is a huge deal i mean if you if you're not totally like into our you know really into the the core of the sport um you know it's a lot softer it's just it's a much different style of, of the way you know you set up the motorcycle did you feel like you got to catch your breath at all in that you know big week off between the the two series no i mean we were <laughs> we were in, we were in southern california on for a couple of days and then, you know, back home to Colorado riding. So, uh, no, there is no catching breath. Uh, any other questions for Eli Tomac, Monster Energy Kawasaki? Okay, that's going to be it for our 450 uh, press conference. Round of applause for these riders for coming. Thank you. <laughs> and again, the plan is to be back tomorrow to ride at 1 o'clock. Uh, and again, the forecast for uh, Friday is good. Not so sure about Saturday yet, and obviously not so great today. We will transition here in just a moment to our 250 press conference. We'll uh, clear the dais, so to speak, and invite a couple of riders up. It's been a dynamic season in the 250 class in a couple of ways. Uh, dating back to last year, we've had a lot of graduates from the division, which leaves the championship wide open. Last year's champion of Monster Energy, Yamaha, Aaron Plessinger, is now a 450 rider. Uh, although he will not be racing here at Hangtown while he recovers from injuries. Uh, another past champion who will not be able to compete due to injury is Jeremy Martin and the Geico Honda team. He will not be able to race this season. And Zach Osborne, who won the championship in 2017, as you just saw, has moved to the 450 class. So it leaves the 250 championship very much up for grabs. We do have some capable riders, though, some of them who just got some championship experience coming off of Monster Energy Supercross and a couple other riders who have won races and have been in contention before. Uh, we've gathered four of them today, so we'll invite them up. We'll invite up Alex Martin of the Joe Gibbs Racing Yoshimura Suzuki team, Chase Sexton, new champion of 250 Supercross East with Geico Honda, Adam Sin Cerullo, who was uh, second in the championship the last time he raced with us in 2017, of the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, and Dylan Ferrandis, new champion of 250 Supercross West, racing for Monster Energy, star racing Yamaha. So we welcome these four riders on up. And an interesting thing to note is how competitive the different brands are in the 250 class, especially if you go all the way back to the 125 days. It's a class where horsepower rules. In some years, one brand has it and the other ones don't. We are probably at an all-time high as far as different manufacturers in this 250 class being on fairly equal 
uh, level as far as bike setup and power and speed. So that should make this championship even more interesting. First rider I'll talk to is Alex Martin. Doesn't really matter what bike he's on, whether it was a Yamaha a few years ago, a KTM last year, now a Suzuki. You're a contender year in and year out. You were second. You could have been second in the championship three years in a row. With a late injury two years ago while you were running second cost you that. You did finish second last year. Can you replicate that? Can you be the same contender you feel switching bikes again now to Suzuki? Or are you feeling like you were last year? Right, turn that on. Yeah, there you go. Hello. There you go. Sounds good. Yeah, I think having been second in this championship a few times, I'd like to think I'm the, the shoe in or the, the natural choice. But uh, having said that, it's pro motocross. You know, nothing comes easy. You can't take anything for granted. I mean, we got uh, a lot of stiff competition with these guys, and, uh, there, and there's more competition that's here at the press conference. So, um, you know, it's going to take a lot of sacrifice uh, training-wise, blood, sweat, and tears to get that, that number one plate in Indiana at the end of the year. But, um, like, having said that, though, I'm... I'm very comfortable on the JGR Suzuki. Um, first time in a few years that I was able to actually finish Supercross healthy. And I think just having finished Supercross healthy and done those extra races has helped me just with the race intensity. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with, with the setup I have going in the JGR Suzuki. And, and um, I'd like to think that the experience from the last few years and kind of being in contention, um, that experience will hopefully help me to uh, be holding that plate in Indiana at the end of the summer. Yeah, that experience, uh, you had mentioned a few years ago when you started to win races and even had the points lead briefly, that a lot of it was new to you. You were a journeyman privateer for a long, long time. Are there things you've learned these last couple of seasons now, the next time if you're winning races or you hold the red plate, that you can approach things differently now that you've experienced that a few times? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long road for me for sure. I mean, I remember days when... 2009, 2010, I'd show up to the race and I had a different mechanic every weekend and I was hitching rides from the airport to get to the track and, um, you know, not then 11, 10 days, like not knowing whether my bike was going to show up or not. So uh, we've come a long way and, and even my mentality, I've had to embrace the fact that instead of just being happy with the top 10 and, you know, that paycheck was going to help me pay my cell phone bill, now I'm like, okay, like I got to win and you got to embrace the fact that you want to try and beat these guys, not just be happy to be up there racing with them. So... Like, my mentality definitely has changed over the years, but I kind of feel like that's all served the purpose of helping me, um, hopefully, you know, this year try and try and get a number one plate. Um, we've been close and, and uh, you know, just need a little bit more, a little bit more to be up there, and hopefully this is the year. I feel like you're one of the more knowledgeable riders. You've been around for a while. I know you really enjoy the fitness and the training side. Talk about getting through 24 motos and trying to be just as strong in Moto 1 as Moto 24 and maintaining throughout the summer. What's your plan to be able to do that effectively this year? Yeah, I think everyone has a different approach. But for me, um, the last few years, like in 16, I came in really well and kind of maintained, I thought, throughout the whole season. And in 17, I feel like I came in a little undertrained, and But then it actually helped me kind of halfway through. I felt like I was stronger at the end. And then last year, I was like, oh, I want to be super strong. And I came in almost maybe a little too fatigued. And then, I, I mean, my last three, four races in outdoors were pretty bad at the end of the year. So... Um, this year, just training-wise, I think we're taking a little step back. I don't want to burn myself out through the first three. Just kind of get through these West Coast races, and I mean, there's a lot of racing left after we leave uh, Thunder Valley in Colorado. So, I mean, honestly, the key is just to be there week in and week out. Um, there's 24 motos in that, you know, 24, 35-minute motos. That's a lot of racing, and a lot of things can happen. And honestly, just being healthy and, and focusing on the things I can focus on, I can't there's a lot of things out of my control, and I'm just going to focus on what I can control, and that's honestly getting off the gate and getting through the first few laps clean and just trying to finish those motos strong and, and uh, put on some good battles and racing for the fans. Uh, questions for uh, Alex Martin, second in the championship last year. Alex, uh, 10 podiums the last two years, but it's been since uh, 2016 since you, uh, you won your two overalls. You talked about uh, number one plate and championship contender. How important is it going to be to uh, win uh, motos and overalls this year to, to meet that goal? Yeah, definitely a bit of a frustrating statistic there. Um, you know, I've had a lot of uh, races on the KTM where I was close but just threw it away. And um, like you said, it's been two years since I've had an overall win. And I've had a lot of podiums, seconds and thirds since then. And it's kind of uh, like a sore subject. It feels a little bittersweet. Um, but, you know, this year, kind of hoping that, uh, you know, the JGR Suzuki is the kind of the little extra ingredient maybe to get the job done. Um, so we've done our preparation, we've done our work, and, and 
I guess we'll find out Saturday where we stack up. Alex, originally I think you were supposed to be the only rider on the team for the summer, but you, we have Kyle Peters in there now. Does having a second rider help with setup and uh, what's going on with the bikes where you guys can talk a little bit about it also? Uh, yeah, I was actually kind of bummed out. I was hoping to have a 250 teammate coming in outdoors, and then last week on Thursday I found out Kyle Peters is going to be my teammate. So uh, I think it's always beneficial to uh, have a teammate that you can talk about line choices with and and things of that nature. So um, I definitely don't think it's a dis I think it's an advantage for sure to have a teammate out there that you can kind of share info on the track with for sure. Uh, yeah, you switched to Suzuki this year. It's been a while since that brand. They didn't even have a 250 team for a while. Uh, the Yamaha and the KTM you rode before, those have proven to be race-winning type programs. So can you prove the doubters wrong and show this team is ready just like they were a couple of years ago when they were in the 250 class and contending Suzuki-wise? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, having said that, it's uh, definitely a little chip on my shoulder maybe to, to help out the team and, and give them some results and, uh, and try and get the job done for the Suzuki. It's a, it's a good group of people. I really enjoy working with the JGR guys and Suzuki guys, Yoshimura. So, um, you know, you want to pay that back and, and give them good results and, and try and uh, get the championship. So, I, like I said, it's a good organization, and I'm happy to be a part of it, and hopefully we can get them some results. All right, that's Alex Martin of the uh, JGR Yoshimura Suzuki team. Next, we'll move to Chase Sexton of the Geico Honda squad. Again, new champion in Monster Energy Supercross, winning the 250 Supercross East Championship. So we'll go back to that. You've had two weeks, which is, as the 450 riders tell us, is not a lot of reset time. Uh, it would be awesome to celebrate that title. Do you feel like you've been able to, or was it immediately back to work and focus on this? Um, yeah, not really. Not too much celebration going on. Um, obviously, that night celebrating with my team and stuff was cool. But, uh, yeah, I was right back to work on Monday. Went to Glen Helen and... Uh, did some motos, so it was uh, back to work, and I feel like I've had a lot of preparation this year, honestly, more than I had last year racing the West Coast. Um, I've been, uh, those weeks we had off on the East Coast, I was mainly focused on outdoors and uh, focusing on getting my bike better, and the uh, team came down to Florida, and we did, uh, did, did some work at the Nest, and uh, it's cool to have them there, and uh, I feel like I've made a lot of progress, and I feel like my bike's in a really good place, a lot better than we were last year, so uh, looking forward to kicking this thing off on Saturday. At the end of the year last year, both you and your teammate, R.J. Hampshire, really seemed to ramp up the results. R.J. even got a win. Um, so compared to this time last year at the opener, you must be far ahead from, from based on what you know now. Yeah, for sure. Um, last year, we came into the season with a new bike and not a lot of testing before, uh, before the first race at Anaheim Supercross season. So, yeah, we just kept making progress. Um, halfway through the season, I actually went out to California and tested uh, some new motor parts and... Uh, I think it made a big difference from Washougal on. I think uh, I didn't finish outside. I think we, I just my finishes got a lot better. I had a top five uh, unit Dilla and then two podiums to finish finish out the season. So uh, no, it was good. And the bike, like I said, is a lot better uh, place now. We had a full off season of testing to get the bike where we thought we needed to be. So uh, looking forward to this year. Um, a lot of good competition, as uh, as you guys can see. Um, it's going to be a good season. In Supercross, I know the goal this year was to get your first race win. You still, you've come so close, but you still haven't done it here outdoors yet. Do you feel you need to get that early to just get that out of the way and get that off your back? Would that help a lot? Yeah. Um, it, it took a lot longer than I thought I was going to take in Supercross. Uh, I was, honestly, that's all I thought about all season long in Supercross. And if it finally get it, felt uh, really good. And um, trying to do the same thing in outdoors, uh, just focus on motos and not even the overall, just focus on the individual motos and try and get as many wins and podiums as I possibly can. Um, Obviously, to get the first one would be awesome. It's uh, it's tough having the both uh, the regions split in Supercross and now bringing or bringing them back together for motocross. It's uh, it's cool and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a tough class, but uh, I feel good and we put a lot of work in this off season or this uh, two weeks. So I'm um, looking forward to uh, getting this thing going. Don't you two ride together quite a bit? Uh, just have you been riding together? How does that work? Now they're gonna race against each other, but a lot of your prep, I would think, was together. Uh, yeah, during the East Coast break when we had, especially like after Indianapolis, we, we had quite a few motos we did together. Uh, you know, this guy's pretty good during the week in practice, and uh, he's always showing me the hotline or whatever. So, uh, I'm honestly, though, in terms of training partners, and Adam, Adam will be there this summer as well. So, I mean, between the three of us, you can't ask for better training partners. So I think, um, you know, we all, we all uh, know what it takes, and we all are willing to do the work. So, it's, it's nice to have that little extra motivation during the week, and, 
and uh, have kind of the rabbit or whatever. You know, it's I think it's a benefit for sure. Yeah, uh, me and me and Big Al have been putting in the work uh, in the summer or for this summer. It's gonna be it's gonna be good having and then Adam having him back. Uh, these two have helped me I think quite a bit, and then having Ken also um, training with him have helped me. I've only been in this for two years now, and I feel like I've learned a lot just from the, being around these guys and be able to train with them is awesome. And I feel like we have uh, pretty good mindsets going in the week. We put the work in, and um, yeah, it's going to be a good summer. Hey, we have questions for uh, Chase Sexton, new champion in Supercross. Uh, uh, one more for you. Uh, consistency is so difficult, especially as you mentioned, this is almost a double stack field of talent compared to what we see in Supercross where they divide by east and west. Uh, how difficult is it to just, if you have a weekend where you say get third or fourth, be okay with that, even though you want to win races, but for the long haul, that might be what it takes. Yeah, consistency, consistency is going to be key, I think. Uh, I think in Supercross, I did a pretty good job of being consistent, but like I said, there's everyone's together in motocross, so it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a long summer. Just getting good starts and putting yourself in good positions is going to be the key. I think uh, coming from the back, is it's hard in this class with how stacked it is. So I'm looking forward. To, uh, I think our bike's in a lot better position, like I said, and to get a good start is going to be key, and I think it's going to be a fun summer racing. Okay, that's Chase Sexton of the Geico Honda team. One question. Chase, you're, you're 19. You won a Supercross championship. You said you just went right into training, which I believe, okay? But something had to happen. What's the coolest thing that happened in the wake of you winning the 250 East title that that shocked you like oh my gosh that is so awesome for me um i really didn't do much i think uh we went back to the hotel and i ate pizza and ice cream was basically all i got for uh the championship but just to be able to celebrate with the team um i've been with them for the last four years the last two years of my amateur career and then um first two of my pro career and just to be able to give it to them and uh i'm not old enough to go out and party or anything so i just uh kept it pretty low-key and was back to work on Monday, but uh, no, it's it's cool to be able just to have these guys and uh, to celebrate with them was awesome and still sinking in, but uh, yeah, we got another championship to go for and uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good summer. Yeah, do you get any texts or calls from somebody that made it seem cool or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, a few of them, like Ricky and those guys, like guys I look up to, like Chad Reed and all them uh, reached out. But uh, honestly, the people from Illinois that I've uh, been with for my whole amateur career, it's it's cool to see them reach out. And uh, it's just uh, cool being an Illinois guy at heart. And uh, for them to support me is awesome. And to be fair, pizza and ice cream might be normal for a guy like me. But on the race diet, that probably is a bit of a celebration. For us, that's Saturday night. What's the big deal? But that actually is something, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a big big fan of ice cream, so I don't really get to eat it too much. I maybe eat it a little more than uh, I should be, but uh, no, I celebrated with that and uh, some pizza. Uh, it was good. Uh, short-lived, but uh, yeah, it was uh, the only thing I could do really being only 19. Had you had pizza at all in the calendar year of 2019 until then? Don't lie. Uh, yeah, oh. no, no question about that. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, uh, that is Chase Sexton. Uh, we will move to Adam C. And Cerullo of the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. Uh, are you okay? Are you okay? Because when there's a heartbreaking Supercross loss, and it's not just you, we've seen it happen, we always wonder what the mental state of the rider will be with that quick turnaround. What's it been like the last couple weeks? What's that? <laughs> What's it been like the last uh, two weeks for you to try to ramp it back up? Check. Yeah. There you go. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, at first, it's like, like, when it initially happened, when, when I, I ultimately blew it in, in the race and crashed, I, I, I've heard a lot of comments, people are stoked that I stayed out on the track and finished the race, and I was raised that way, and, and I wouldn't have quit no matter what, I was going to finish, you know, knowing I was going to lose, um, but really, why I stayed out there is, like, I was in disbelief, like, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough moment. We put a lot into it, and, and to see it slip away so fast, it, it kind of doesn't feel real at first. But um, I think I've grown a lot over the course of my career, and I think one of the things that, that helps me kind of move on is just understanding the fact that you can't change it. Like, it, it happened. I can lay in bed all night, and I can think to myself, man, I wish, you know, I could change If I could go back, and, and that's what kind of puts you through the pain. But honestly, since, like, the Tuesday after the race, I've been... I've been fine and back on my normal. You know, I 
rode a little bit on Monday and then and got back into it on Tuesday. And I really, of course, you think about it sometimes and you get bummed. I mean, it's it's what we do and we put a lot into it. And um, but yeah, I've honestly been been fine. So assuming that you move past that and you're right where you would have been, whether you won that title or not, you didn't race the championship last year. You were out with knee surgery. How did you at least feel and how do you feel with your motocross prep and trying to get back into this after missing it for a season? Yeah, like you said, I uh, after Supercross this year, I, I realized I hadn't done a dirt start since 2017. Like wow. Indiana 2017, it, it's, you know, obviously we're starting off great in the Supercross championship and uh, so got those dialed, but I, I felt really good being on the West Coast and uh, you know, we had that six week or so break, four or five weeks um, in between San Diego and Atlanta and kind of starting the outdoor prep then and just kind of getting the base work in the moto. You're not so worried about speed, kind of doing the longer bike rides. You know, you have the weekends to recover. And um, I feel like my my fitness is at an all time high um, as of now. And I think my race craft and overall ability to kind of make it happen out there, I feel confident with as opposed to in the past. So. Um, but like these guys said, it's, it's a tough field, so you're going to have to be on our toes every weekend. Okay. We have questions for uh, Adam, who was a uh, runner-up in championship. Oh, third. Third, bro. A lucky third, too. Who's second? You, you, you got hurt? Third? Lucky third? Yeah, third. Right, we'll take that. Oh, your brother. Second. That's right. Yep. Jeremy. Uh, no questions for Adam. All right, I'll keep going. Uh, we know in Supercross you did make strides this year, and you credit a lot of it to working with Nick Way on bike technique. Is some of that program, it's a different type of riding, but is some of those elements still in play here for uh, outdoors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, Supercross ended terribly for us, but at the same time, it has been a great year in terms of my development and, and where I'm at riding and, and how I feel. Like, it doesn't change that. Obviously, we wish we could change the last race, but, um, yeah, I feel super strong. Technically, I'm a lot better than I, than I have been in the past, which just allows you to be more efficient. It comes into play, especially these East Coast rounds. We get into, like, Millville, Redbud, Southwick types. Um, I think that'll help me out a lot. And just having Nick and working a little bit closer with him. Like I said, guy that goes to the track with me pretty much every day, keeps an eye on my technique, keeps me accountable. Um, and, and like these guys said, we'll be back in Florida this summer training with Chase and Alex and, and Kenny. So um, I, th I think we can transfer a lot of good things from Supercross into outdoors. Adam, obviously we're not going to get on the track today. How much do you... Does it, is it an itch to get back out there and, and get settled in on what you're going to be racing on for this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wish. I actually flew in last night because I didn't want to rush in the morning, and obviously I was super stoked to ride today. And well, we kind of knew there was a chance of rain, but i um, always anxious to get out there. You know, the first, you know, coming off of Supercross and going in outdoors, it had, it's been since 2017 since I've been here, and um, I think everybody's just itching to go out there and, and show uh, what you have in the tank. So just anxious to get out there and and, you know, have a good weekend. All right, any other questions for Adam? Go ahead. First of all, thank you for talking to Daniel Blair on TV after what I know is really tough. That was very classy. Uh, and your answer was spot on. I know you've got a lot of positive thoughts on that. Uh, here, when you sit here and you listen to the rain, how, Adam, uh, how far ahead do you have to mentally prepare for conditions that may be kind of nasty on Saturday? Uh, yeah, you got to wrap your head around the fact that it's probably going to be a mud race. Uh, in the end, that doesn't change much for me. Everybody's going to go out there and we're going to do our best. I mean, you can either let the rain and all that stuff affect you, and you can say, oh, man, this sucks, and uh, what about my goggles? My glove's going to get uh, muddy. I've already committed to running handguards all year. I told my team I'm running handguards all year. So that's, all, that's already a plus for me. The handguards are already on the bike. Don't have to worry about that. But, uh, no, we just go out there and do our best and, and see what happens. Pastrana style. Handguards. Yeah, I was thinking about bringing back the clear chest protector, too. I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. That is uh, Adam Sincerulo of the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. And uh, one other rider to talk to here, the new champion of 250 Supercross West from Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha is Dylan Ferrandis. So, Dylan, same question we would have for Chase. Uh, not a lot of time to celebrate. It did seem like you were pretty emotional, especially the way it happened so, so randomly and crazy at the last second. It's a pretty emotional title win. So how long did you get to enjoy that before it was, again, just back to the grind? Uh, for sure, it was, uh, was really crazy. Uh, Saturday night, uh, two weeks ago in Vegas, was a crazy moment for me. Uh, it took me a couple of days to to really re realize uh, what really happened, you know, because uh, yeah, 
Adam was a really strong all season and uh, honestly we didn't really expect him to make uh, any mistake and uh, and we, we put a lot of pressure on him. Uh, I made a good start, was leading and try, just tried my best and he, he made a mistake and, uh, and I won the title so it just happened so fast and uh, was crazy. Uh, honestly, yeah, it took me a couple of days to to get back in a, in a training mood because, um, yeah, I mean, uh, um, what I always dream uh, happened, so it was tough to get back uh, at work. We we took uh, two days with uh, with my uh, my girl, uh, two days to to relaxing in Vegas, do a couple of cool stuff, and uh, also friends and family was there. So so we really enjoyed the moment. But um, yeah, it was a uh, a uh, really strange uh, emotional moment because. Uh, was I mean uh, we went to the party on Saturday night, but I was not like uh, like I, I could have been uh, in the past like crazy. I was just so much relaxing and uh, like just uh, try to realize what happened. So good moment. So what has the last week been like? The couple of days you would have had this week before you had to come here, or the end of last week. How's the riding been going? Training and pre preparation for this. Uh, honestly, um, it's really tough for me to to prepare the outdoors here in America because. Uh, in Europe, uh, I, I, I rode uh, four professional years in, uh, in GP, and uh, we train all the winter. We try muddy, dry. We move on uh, in Belgium, in Spain. We go a little bit everywhere around uh, Europe to, to try a different track, different uh, style of dirt, sand, and stuff. So we really have time to walk on a bike, to try many, many things on a bike. Uh, and here it's, uh, it's just so fast. You have like six training to, to build a bike for the outdoors. And uh, honestly, I'm struggling with that because uh, I'm not used to. And it's been uh, like this the last two years or so. And uh, I try my best. The team uh, do uh, everything they can for me to, to give me the, the most comfortable uh, bike. But uh, yeah, I wish I could have more, more training and more, more day to, to test. Uh, the riding uh, have been good. The speed is there. The, the technique also is there. But it's more just try... Uh, Try different uh, different setting because uh, we ride so st so stiff suspension in uh, in supercross that when you move to outdoors is a uh, is never I mean you w just want to go stiffer because you you used to and uh, and you, and it's not a good way you have to to make the bike really soft for for the big braking zone and stuff so it's something I'm struggling with but uh, I mean we see we we try to make the best of it and uh, the bike is strong my teammate uh, also helped me a lot to to build the best bike, and uh, I think um, we have a good bike and uh, a bike ready for, for the win. Uh, questions uh, for Dylan, new champion in Supercross, and won a couple races last year toward the end of the season outdoors. Steve? Dylan, did your celebration in Vegas consist of pizza and ice cream, or, or was it something else? <laughs> no, no pizza ice cream for me. Uh, the next day, yeah, we went to a, a three-star Michelin restaurant with, uh, with my girl, so this is was really cool for us because we like the good food and... Uh, and uh, yeah, kind of a gastronomic uh, restaurant. But that, that's what I mean. To the food, uh, I mean that's what we did uh, to to enjoy of the, the the good food. But yeah, now on a Saturday night we went uh, we went to the party and drink a little bit, but nothing crazy. I mean, uh, we we all know that the the outdoors is, is coming so fast that we you cannot go too crazy. For the outdoor season, do you prefer the more technical tracks or do you like? wider open faster tracks uh, i have no preference uh, i like sand uh, i like south week uh, south week is one of the funny funniest track of the season for me because uh, it's where i'm i feel uh, comfortable sand is what uh, i've worked a lot in the past and uh, feel good in sand but yeah i mean we have a many nice track and i have no preference uh, uh, I, I won la last year in uh, in Asia in a, in a big mud, so I can say I like mud. But uh, honestly, no, I, I don't like mud. So just I I don't do not care about it. Uh, is uh, everything every is same for everybody? And uh, we see. Yeah, it appears that one of the struggles you've had to be consistent is is starts both indoors and out. And you did nail it when you needed to in Vegas, and obviously that made a huge difference. And you said you worked really hard on starts for that race. Do you believe? For the summer, you figure that out because that's going to help with consistency a lot. We saw motos last year where you were nowhere to be seen in the first couple laps. Can you fix that and be better off the gate this time? Uh, yeah, I think we, we fixed the problem. Uh, we changed the many, many things before Vegas uh, to improve the start. And uh, we, we repeat what we changed uh, last, this week and last week. And uh, pr practice start was good. So uh, I think we make good improvement. And, uh, but now is a... Uh, 
we see Saturday, uh, Saturday 1 p.m. We see uh, what can I do uh, at the start. Yeah, the end of the season last year, you here you were battling with your teammate Aaron Plessinger, who won the title. So, can you take some confidence out of the way the season ended last year for this season? Yeah, for sure. Last year, um, I took my time to to come back uh, during the season after my my uh, surgery on my arm and. Uh, and uh, when I was ready, I came, I came back and uh, won a couple moto, won uh, two rounds. Uh, I, I was really happy about my uh, double moto win uh, in Unagia. And um, yeah, it was, it was good uh, end of the season uh, for me. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I learned I learned a lot again last year with, uh, with um, it's for, for, for foreign people like me. It's uh, always a, a learning process, you know, uh, it's not it's not only learning. Um, the, the the race is uh, the, the lifestyle you know and uh, the 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 um, outdoor outdoor here in America is really different at, uh, in Europe and uh, is 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 go really fast you have only two short uh, practice to to make the the best of it and um, it's still uh, I'm still in uh, in this learning position but for this year I think uh, I can uh, I can feel more confident in, um, with my two last season here and and we see. We asked uh, Marvin in the 450 class about working with David Villeman, but his program's a little different, I think, than yours. He uses Villeman just for riding technique. Are, are you using Villeman all around? Is that your trainer, and, and is everything based around his program? Is that how it works for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We are, we are 100% time together. He come uh, with me at the gym. Uh, he follow me when I run, uh, not when I cycling, but when I run. And, uh, and uh, yeah, every time he can uh, add the training. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, full -time, uh, he's my full-time trainer, yes. He's following you when you run. Is he running? Or what is he doing when you're running? <laughs> no, he's cycling when I run. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, does that help? He's been through the same drill. You say how difficult it is to adjust. He obviously did that. David Villeman won a lot of races here in this championship. So is that helping speed up the process by having his knowledge? Yeah, for sure. That, that's why I pay him to, to help me. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Help me for for win, you know. So yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw we saw this year that uh, with the the West Coast champion, Championship, uh, he helped me a lot. So I'm really happy about him. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, just uh, every every time he can, he, he always push me uh, to to not to the limit, but to what I can do without without um, wi without crashing or, or take risks. So um, no, he's, he's he's been really good so far, and I'm really happy to work with him. Watching you guys, uh, you and Marvin, at, even at the podium in Vegas, uh, looks like transferring tips back and forth on, on where to go on the track. Um, do you do the same for outdoors also? Uh, yeah, at Vegas was a little bit weird because at the first he, he just congrats me and after after the parade lap he, he asked me, hey, what did you make, in what line you took in a whoop? So I say, uh, yeah, go there, there. But yeah, we when we can, we try to share some 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 lines, some some stuff. But you know, it's uh, we we don't have so much time to to spend together and to to really speak. So when we can, we try, but it's not really often. Uh, my last question: Your team has won four titles in recent span: two with Jeremy Martin, one with Cooper Webb, one with Aaron Plessinger last year. Is there something about the team that you feel gives them a leg up uh, outdoors? Because the results have certainly been good. Uh, yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, my team is giving uh, more than everything they have to to win championship. It's, uh, it's crazy. They, they, I feel they work day and night. Uh, I, I never see, see them rest. And uh, and yes, it's crazy. They they are really good and they are hundred uh, percent in in racing. Uh, they just give everything. It's crazy. They they do not care about everything else than uh, than winning championships. So it's something that I, I really like because I'm uh, I'm same in in, uh, in my uh, in my life. That's that's the the way I like. And uh, and yeah, it's not for nothing that they they won so many championships. And uh, and yeah, I really hope to to give them uh, one more championship this year. Okay, that's going to do it for our 250 riders. That's our press conference. We'll see you back for riding tomorrow. Thank you everybody for coming. Yeah, that's our show. Thanks to those riders for, again, giving much better, longer, more in-depth answers. And also thanks to my TV producer, Chris Bond, who told me I asked 50 questions during today's press conference. 50. It's like a personal best. I'm really, really coming into the season strong. Watch the races on Mav TV and NBCSN. TV schedule is just announced. It's at racerxonline.com. It's at promotocross.com. Watch the races. Listen to myself, Grant Langston, and Will Christian back the JGR Suzuki team. They back a lot of people, and they can back you. 
And also check out the latest issue of Racer X, the magazine. Everything in the magazine is totally different than what you'll see on the website or on social media. So get yourself a subscription now. It's cheap. I'm talking you pay for a year what you would do for like a streaming internet service per month. It's cheap. Do it. So that's our show. Let's go racing. See you next week.